So the one thing that gets me caught up is when I hear polar vortex being used incorrectly, because there's always a polar vortex, right? Oh. There's always. So if, if to me, Paul, right, if you're looking from top down on the earth, right, you're looking directly over the North Pole. There's a, a current of air, a, a vortex of air, a circulation of air that's going around that. OK, um, and that is what holds in the truly bitter, coldest Arctic air. It really kind of holds that in place basically over that polar region. Right. So what happens is when that vortex weakens, that's when some of that really, really bad, bad, cold polar arctic terrible air escapes that region and starts dropping southward now what we've been learning is that it's a cause and effect that we can get that weakness by and this is where i think it gets all jumbled in people a sudden stratospheric warm-up so you have something that's warming but yet it's producing a, a, a reaction that creates all this cold and I think all of that gets jumbled up. So so what we hear in the media sometimes is, oh, the polar vortex is coming. Well, it's not necessarily that the polar vortex itself is coming. The result of the weakening of the polar vortex and the cold air is what is coming. Did I do a pretty good job with that? You did. And there are times where we get the polar vortex to do a split uh, where a piece will come pretty far south into southern Canada over the top and will sit there. And that's that could be a problem. That's why there are two differences uh, when you talk about polar vortex being disrupted. There is a displacement where the polar vortex is not centered anymore over the pole, but it's still together, but it's just kind of expanded and stretched. Just simplistically, the uh, spinning top, the center of it being over the pole, that center of circulation can kind of come down towards the mid latitudes a little bit rather than sit over directly at the top of the, the North Pole. That's correct. What ends up happening is there is kind of a, you know, we talk about blocking. There is a block going on over the pole where it's not allowing that displaced vortex to move uh, once it gets in place. And that's why these events can take longer periods. Now, if we were to stretch that enough and break off a couple pieces from the polar vortex, then those pieces would have a longer duration of time to try to get back over the polar region and consolidate once again. So we, we believe, and a lot of the research shows, that a worse event is when you get a split to occur right. because it's a longer duration of cold and intense cold in one in some places it could be warmer and drier uh in other places and so the pattern just doesn't move for almost 30 to 45 days uh it could be that long on um, that or maybe even longer sometimes two months that we could be dealing with that kind of situation this one to us and i know there's been some arguments uh on on there on what kind of vortex we're de dealing with to us here at our team we see it as a displacement and a displacement means that the vortex does will have an opportunity to try to strengthen back over the pole again um, at some point, and that will ease back the threat of intense cold coming down down the road. But we got to get through the cold first before we start talking about recovery. One is displacement, and then the other is split. Is that kind of like what we see when the jet stream itself over the lower 48 splits and we get different segments of air, you know, really cold, colder, and then not as cold? Or is this more that the flow, which, you know, can be confined into that circle or that kind of that vortex, parts of it kind of expand or contract, so you get different regions getting different effects? Is that what you're talking about? I think in a displacement, you can still get more movement. The air masses could come places like, uh, can come first like in Asia and then transfer farther east. That's why you see a little more movement in any given spot, and that's why it doesn't last as long. I think when you have the split, that a lot of times that tendency, that split doesn't move. Kind of like an upper-level cutoff low in the springtime just kind of sits there and keeps the weather bad in one spot, but nice in another spot. So I, I think that's what you're looking at there. To listen to the full episode, just click the links below. And never miss a podcast by subscribing to Everything Under the Sun on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. New episodes every Friday.